In this module, we'll talk about linkage and recombination. Another scientist by the name of Thomas Hunt Morgan was doing experiments on flies, on fruit flies. He was looking at transmission of genes from one generation to next. I'll give you an example of one of his experiments. He crossed two flies. One was heterozygous for the color and the wings. So the body color, the wild type uh, is gray. So we will call it capital B, small b. Heterozygous for body color is capital B, small b. For, of course, the homozygous would be capital B, capital B, and homozygous recessive would be small b, small b. The normal wings would be capital V, small g. The abbreviation for the wings, normal wings is capital V, small g. And for the vestigial wings, which are non-functional, is small v with a g. So when he crossed these flies, he was checking, looking for independent assortment. What we would get is we can, if we do this experiment, as you can see on the screen, the, if these two genes, the alleles for these two genes were independently assorting, we will be able to make these following four gametes from the, the parent with normal, uh, with normal body, with gray body and normal wings. These are the four combination, four gametes this particular fly will be able to produce. However, the homozygous recessive kept small v, small vg, it will be only able to produce one type of gamete right here. So we would expect the ratio of their progeny in the following manner. So the ratio is 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1. That is if these genes were sorting independently they were being divided into the gametes independently. 50% uh, we have already seen this is also Punnett square in a way. So small b, capital B we can go with small b from the male and capital V can go with the small v in this offspring. This is one combination between as a result of mating between these two flies. The other combination is small b, small b, capital V, small v. The third is capital B, small b, and small v and then of course the fourth is all small letters small b with small v's. This is not the result Morgan got. He got something different. This is the result of Morgan's experiment. This is the expected if these genes were sorting independently. We will get progeny with a ratio of 1 is to 1 is to 1. The observed was basically the ratio, the observed phenotypes were as following. As you can see on the screen, I have highlighted them. Pretty much it was one to one between the parental phenotypes. That is gray body, normal wings, black body, vestigial wings. What is more interesting here is the small number of individuals had non-parental phenotypes. So with this experiment, if we say that, okay, these genes are not assorting independently, we, which would imply that these genes are linked. The gene for body color and the wing type, if they are linked, these two genes are present on the same chromosome, then how did we get these recombinant phenotypes, which I circled here, these, these phenotypes, how are we able to get these phenotypes? This would basically imply that chromosomes, which were carrying these genes, at some point exchange little pieces. Let's look at that. We have already studied meiosis. We have studied how chromosomes form tetrads in meiosis 1. When these tetrads are formed, we also saw a video of this, an animation clip. Chromosomes are not unbreakable. Chromosomes can exchange different pieces between the homologous chromosome. When this exchange takes place, genes from one chromosome will be shifted to the other chromosome, the other homologous chromosome. When that happens, we end up with new combinations and actually this is very important for diversity, genetic diversity, this phenomena has played an important role in evolution also. So we have now two types of gametes which have the parental phenotype 
which are carrying the original chromosomes as they were present in the parent these two chromosomes and two of these chromosomes are recombinant they are produced by recombination of bracket crossing over between these two chromosomes homologous chromosomes at during meiosis this was a very important discovery because in the next module i'll show you how this information was used to make genetic maps determining the position of different genes along the length of chromosome we will look at that in the next module